Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and I'm here with some Heart of the Swarm action and it is a cool matchup, it is a PVZ, it is on Newkirk City and just generally speaking these two are amazing players so I'm going to go straight in to introducing them to you. Down in the lower right position as the Red Protoss we do have from Team Root, Minigum. And now down in the lower left position, we have got the blue Zerg player. Some of you may know him for his calm and temperate mannerisms. It is, as my camera goes flying off the view, for Team Evil Geniuses, Idra. Now, yeah, apparently these two already had a had a bit of fun beforehand, judging by the chat there. So I'm just going to do my best and try and ignore that. But yeah, this should be a really interesting game. We can see already that minigun is getting the pylon on the low ground. Forge fast expanding, still pretty much the most common thing you're going to see Protoss go for. There are the odd few players who decide to try and get a one base mothership core style of play out. But generally speaking, that one gay mothership core harassment, while it's good, it's not, too many Zerg players are able to adapt to it. And it's really, really obvious where it's happening and what's going on. And to be honest, I'd say the natural base is where things are really going to be happening and if you're able to get your natural down as a Protoss player you're so much better defended. The key things if Idra is here that you really want to be looking out for and the key things that I'd be expecting Minigun to go for is some kind of air harassment or some kind of drop play. Purely based on the fact that there is this close by air rush distance you can get in here everything's looking fairly okay and just you can come in you can harass with oracles phoenix you can get a drop in a sentry a sentry drop into the main is really potent so all of these things are things that can be very very, very interesting. For the moment though, we do just have Rue coming in, checking, taking a quick look. Yes, the spawning pool is coming down. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Going to go and come and block this hatchery. And this is a bit frustrating. It's not a huge problem. But the other thing that Idra has to take into account on this map is which third he takes. Because there is this close third where you expand towards your opponent, which generally speaking, Zerg players don't want to do. But the only other one is quite a long way away with an entrance from the back and that can cause an awful lot of problems because when you come running in there you can just suddenly be thinking oh if there's a pylon up there I can take a lot of damage, it's difficult to defend especially if there's multi prong harassment air attacks at the main at the same time. So these are the different things that clearly Idra does need to take into account because the game is just so much more metagame shifted towards doing lots of multi prong harassment and just relentless pressure really. But Idra he could go for some of that himself, he can come and try and push up here. He can definitely look at potentially going muters on this map. It's a great map for mutalists with so much dead space and muters are strong against Protoss just due to the fact that they've got that health regeneration and it can be very difficult to deal with them. Now, meanwhile for Minigun, it was a Nexus then Forge. He's got his gateway on his way down now as well. The gateway before the cannon, so just playing as economically as possible but that's fine due to the fact that currently Idra only has two Zerglings out whose only job is apparently to go and scout around and take a nice little peek at what could be going down any proxy pylons and Idra has opted to take the closer third rather than one th further away. But the only th reason I'm not a massive fan of this base is because of the effect how effective force fields can be. If you get some force fields down between the hatch and this building, then basically you just cannot... You get your army split in half and it's a little bit awkward, but this all is assuming the minigun goes for some kind of sentry heavy play. It could be just a two base timing push with a couple of gateways producing a lot of stalkers with a mothership core for the mass recall if you get a lings around. So really the game is still being fleshed out and I know that this weekend at the said UK Masters we're going to have some incredible play coming down. So <laughs> I'm just doing this to make sure... <coughs> as I die a little bit, that obviously I keep a game a day on my channel. So make sure you do subscribe if you're new here because a new pro level game is up every single day of the week and has been for the last 14, 15 months. So yeah, that's a pretty good achievement. And really, if it could be unlocked, that'd be awesome. And this is, oh, Minigun, you have become a fan of, you've got a new fan because you've used the beautiful new pylons. Look at them. Oh my goodness, this is the first time I've seen them. They are so pretty. They are much nicer than just standard, regular old pylons. But Idra, he's not using the Overlord skin. Oh, that makes me a bit of a sad panda. But anyway, back to what these two are doing. Currently, we do just have Warpgate tech coming out. Absolutely no reveal from Minigun yet what he's planning. There's no third or fourth gas as of yet. There's no additional gateways. There's literally just one gate, one cybercore. No ground upgrades, though. That's the key thing I'm spotting right now. And something that Idra could spot as well if he pushed up the front, because you can clearly see when a forge is researching. Instead, it's going to be the Stargate coming out very quickly. 
<coughs> and with the sentry here, it's easily defended, but you can put on some nice pressure. Are the Zerglings going to come and poke up? What will they be able to see? If we switch over to Idris' view, well, he comes up, he spots the Stargate straight away. Great little scout there, and that instantly lets Idris know precisely what his opponent is going to be going for. Idris looking quite nice on the drone count. Needs to keep pumping them out, though. 47 now to 41. Could do with a couple more. He's also getting up his third gas, and he's taking the interesting gases, actually. He's getting two of the natural, one of the third, but none in the main base. So this is something that could potentially throw mini gun off, especially if he comes in here and sees a base of the third. That's a bit more unusual. Two at the natural, one at the main is very common. But generally speaking, getting one of the third earlier is a bit more peculiar. So, Minigun, he's opting for Phoenix rather than Oracle Harassment. This just gives him the ability to take out Overlords quite easily, harass into the mineral lines nicely, potentially pick off a Queen or two as well. So, that's a good choice in onto itself with three additional gateways as well. This is just a fairly normal push and transitioning out with that robotics facility. So that's clearly not going to be a big commitment to air or anything like that, or Skytos style play, which is inevitably very vulnerable in the mid-game stages. So all Idris is doing at the moment is just starting to get these spore crawlers down now, not putting any in the main, get, only just now getting his lair, and that's a pretty late lair timing actually, compared to what you see some Zergs go for, which is really down to sort of the 7 or before minute mark, and so as such, Idra, he's just going to be delaying anything like road speed, instead he's just focused on getting as many drones out as he can. Can, and he's done a quite successful job of that, but Minigun is keeping up incredibly well actually. So his pro production is absolutely ace. He's also going straight up to Colossus Tech. We see with the robotics bay getting chucked down. A couple of speed links just going to surround this Zealot. No upgrades really on the way, or no new upgrades out yet. Idra just getting the 1 1, where it's just the 1 0 oh being researched currently by the Protoss players. Four crawlers are nicely surrounding everything. The first Phoenix are just on their way over now, so this is. Not going to do that much with the spore coolers down. The only real hope the minigun has got is that actually these queens get a little out of position. But Idra really committing to spores right now. He's got three in the main and he's already got two down here. So he definitely does not want to have any harassment happening. There are no areas as far as I can see that these phoenix are going to be able to get through. But they should be able to get a drone or two before forcing to retreat just once their shields are gone. So this again is starting to look a bit more in Idra's favour just due to the fact that these phoenix have been denied pretty heavily. There may be some small areas he can get through such as here but he's got to be careful because there's so many spores around that the micro is just going to have to be very intensive picking off an overlord there is always a nice little move the phoenix taking a bit of damage but not too much and look at this a lot of speedlings just denying this third base and a good surround goes down luckily the sentries get some force fields off and a nudge back into the very corner where they do manage to survive that forces idra to fall back the additional zealots coming in as well will put an end to any more aggression but with this colossus coming out idra really needs to start thinking how he's going to deal with that and with these phoenix just still running around trying to harass, trying to deal with some damage, picking off units where they can. It just means that Idra does have to stay a little further back, but with Hydra's coming out, with Muscular Arguments, he can start being more aggressive, having that speed off creep allows him to push forward, deal some more damage, and potentially get some good kills. And if he can deny this third base, which, to be honest, is quite late in the current metagame, He's going to be in a really good position, and especially with his fourth also on its way out. But a quick supply block there from for Idra, just because Minigun is doing such a good job of picking off stray overlords that wander across the map. One up here he hasn't found yet, and also one here, but he will probably find those eventually, but the Hydras are saying no more to that. Phoenix is doing their job of just getting some scouting information, find that fourth base. That suddenly just means to Minigun that he needs to really start trying to keep up because Idra's economy is going to be looking quite nice, although a few more drones could potentially be made. Idra just sitting at 70 for the time being, which means that somewhere he isn't quite saturated. But where that is, I am not sure. Anyway, so he just needs to really pump out a couple more drones. It's always good. His fourth base coming out as well, so he needs to start looking there. And he's getting just a couple there. I don't believe he's seen those Colossi. And as such, if he hasn't spotted them, then that just means that this Spire is just getting down at a normal timing anyway, which is fine. 2-2, two, two, missile attacks coming down. That Spire most likely just going to be used for a few Corruptors in order to take out these Colossi. But with Void Waves coming out, that just means that actually Corruptors can get taken down exceptionally quickly. The fourth base is now up and running. The Phoenix still doing their stuff, just flying around speedily, looking for any Overlords that may be coming out. Idris Creep Spread could be a bit better, is the honest opinion on that. It's still fine, it's getting across the map nicely, but when you see most Zerg players by about 12 minutes being a couple of tumors further forward, so that is nothing that's a huge issue. It will also choosing to go for the Swarm Host, which I think is quite an interesting decision actually. And while Swarm Host Corruptor is strong, you've got to be a bit careful of Colossi because they're just able to deal with Locust very efficiently. And 
As such, when they're in lower numbers, it's okay, and you can still definitely slow down a Protoss Force. But the one thing the minigun can do to really counteract that is get out High Templar. A couple of storms on the Locust can be incredibly powerful, and with an Observer or two, that can really, really allow you to shut down Swarm Hosts very effectively and very easily, which is why every Zerg player should always bring an Overseer with their army just to snipe off any Observers, keeping the Swarm Hosts alive and basically denying the Protoss player any ability in order to attack them. So, as we can see now, the Phoenix just still flying around quite nicely, taking a look at the movements. Pylon is trying to come down at the top here, but should get spotted by Idra, and there we go, so streams of units coming in. The probe unfortunately dies a very, very quick death, but looking all around the map, this is now a very macroed up position, and a very passive game, I've got to say. Only between the two of them, about 1,600 resources lost, which, generally speaking, at this stage of the game, is incredibly low. So... Looking at this now, the War Prism is going to come in, try and do some harassment. There is a few areas that can drop down, such as around here. Just coming right down the edge, sneaking past any Overlords that could be out. The Phoenix are going to finally find this Overlord who's been chilling here for an awfully long period of time. And the army for Minigun is actually getting up there, but Idril with a slight supply advantage, getting a few more Corruptors out. Going to take himself up to 10. So, Hydra, Swarm Host, Corruptor up against Voidray, Colossi, High Templar, and Gateway units. So, nothing too scary on either side, and they should be fairly evenly matched. It's going to come down to the position, and if the Swarm Hosts are able to get into a nice position, then actually it should be fairly okay. In comes some Zealots towards this third base, and the units all being forced to pull back by Idra to defend this. The hatchery is going to be absolutely ace. But the Corruptors have managed to take out that War Prism, I do believe, and as such, that's an end to the drop play. Idris lost basically nothing there. A couple of Locusts are getting taken out, just pushing forward. The rest of the Swarm Hosts just still sitting up here at the moment. There are 11 on the field, which is actually... Uh, not insignificant number. Anything over about 8 can really start getting a little bit more potent. But as we see here for Minigun, he's trying to get out just a few, just at that 4th base, but the 5th base already half done for Idris, so he's doing a really solid job of expanding everywhere, out expanding his opponent, keeping his drone count quite nice, but Minigun as well, he's actually on quite an equal economy, which does favour a Protoss player, but as we can see, Idris just with a slightly larger bank, and with the Swarm Host he can be very, very cost effective. And he already is actually being a bit more cost effective than his opponent, because everything a low Locust kills is a free unit, and anytime you kill a free unit, you or kill an expensive unit for a free unit, it's always going to be a good trade. So these Colossi just having to do a lot of work, and we can see the odd Zella going down here, which is always a bit of a problem. A couple of Vipers in this composition would be brilliant, and with the Hive just finishing up now, that's what I'm expecting to see, but we've got some great storms coming down. The Corruptors from the side trying to pick up as many of those Colossi as they can, but unfortunately at the moment, not managing to get any great control from Minigun, as we can see, and all of the Hydras have just melted now, and actually Idra came off far worse there in that engagement, and really all of the Colossi, I believe, stayed up, four are still on the field, with a lot of health, and as such, I just think, yeah, as you can see, they've all took hardly any damage, most of the damage from those Corruptors actually going down on the Mothership Core, so that in itself was brilliant play out of Minigun, and he seems to be looking to be in a fairly comfortable position now. We do see the probe transfer going on just up to that fourth base, which is heavily defended with cannons, but a lot of units resupplying. The Ultralisk Cabin also on its way through, more Swarm Hosts being added in. Where is the Observer? Well, it's currently just sitting around with the army there, so it hasn't moved forward yet, but there's no Overseer for Idra above his Swarm Host, so therefore isn't going to be able to pick off that Observer if it does come over and grant detection, so that's possibly a little oversight in Idra's play there, but as we've got now, the Phoenix thing taken out by the Corruptor, that was one brave, brave Phoenix, Storms are starting to go down, but the Observer giving vision, and without any units to support, just coming up from the side here, the, well, the Colossi and Stalkers are able to do great damage to Locust, not able to get that critical mass, a good Storm will pick them off, Hydra's from the side though, doing a nice amount of damage, all of the Corruptors have now fallen, I think Minigun is, although he's behind in supply, this army here, the standing army in this engagement, is looking a lot more in favour of the Protoss player. The Swarm Host taking an awful lot of damage, and the important thing is still three of those Colossus do remain. But Idra, he's busy getting out some more Ultras, and I can't help but feel that if he had a couple of Vipers to abduct these Colossi, he'd be in a much better spot. A great blink forward there by Minigun. He's going to be able to get himself another Swarm Host. That knocks Idra down from the 11 he had to just 3. That's significant losses. We can see that over 15,000 resources lost by Idra compared to just 9,000 for Minigun. So Minigun is going to be in a quite a happy position at the moment, but Idra still in a relatively good spot. A Zealot, wait, a Warpin is going to be able to try and pick off this hatch and it should be able to get it and indeed it does fall, but Idra luckily does have a base at the top of the map. So it's still on 4 bases, but then so is Minigun. Minigun actually now ahead 
by two workers. The War Prism trying to get another wave of warpins in to the main, but the Corruptors are putting an end to that and saying, no, that is not going to happen. Idrin out, he is remaxed. He's got some Ultras in here, but is it going to be enough? That is the big question. There are no Immortals out to help deal with those Ultralisks. A lot of Speedlings. The Corruptor count not that high, though, only six. So the problem is still going to be the four Colossi on the field. But if Idrin is able to deal with those effectively, he is going to be in an okay spot. And we see now Minigun getting himself into a little bit of a dangerous position where he could get surrounded. He's going to get trapped from his own base. And as we can see, the Locust, the Hydras, the Ultras, um, all just streaming in towards this third, dealing a nice amount of damage and all of Minigun's army out of position. But this just means that this third is definitely going to fall. Can Minigun get back in time? Well, the answer is the Corruptors are intercepting en route to take out one of those Colossi. And now... The Ultras are starting to get fried, but the supplies looking very equal. Importantly, though, this third base has not quite fallen yet. It is so, so low, and it does go down. So that means now that Idra has taken a good spot. This fourth base up at the top hasn't been taken, so that means it is a four-base Zerg against a three-base Proto at the moment. That favours the Zerg player, and with the fourth base, for, or rather the fifth base for Idra getting remade now, it looks pretty good. But Idra leaves the game. Okay, so I'm not quite sure why he just left. He's got some money in the bank. Um, he just, that was cancelled. I'm, I'm not quite sure why he did that. But clearly, he thought he was behind, even though he was making a lot of ultras. So that was a little bit peculiar. No GG either, clearly. Just getting a bit cross that he can't take out the Protoss Force. So that was some mild rage from Idra there. I hope you all enjoyed the game. Make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment, and of course subscribe. And I hope to catch each and every one of you tomorrow for yet another new cast. I'm Maddles, thanks for watching, and bye for now.